Hi everyone, welcome to Unit 6, Lesson 2 on Empirical Formula. In this part, what we're going to do is talk about what an empirical formula is and how you calculate an empirical formula given the percent composition of a compound. So if you look, empirical formula is a chemical formula that shows the composition of a compound in terms of the relative numbers and kinds of atoms in the simplest ratio. So, for example, if we look at something like hydrogen peroxide, where we have two hydrogens and two oxygens, the empirical formula for this molecular formula would simply be HO. Our greatest common factor, the number that would divide evenly into all of our subscripts, would be 2. So after we divide by that greatest common factor, we're left with our empirical formula. A reminder that this is known as our molecular formula. Now, this becomes important. Being able to convert from percent composition to empirical and eventually molecular formula is used all of the time. So back in college, when we would send out samples to be analyzed, we would get a report back that told us what percent each element was in our compound. We would then use those percentage values, figure out our empirical formula to see if the empirical formula agreed with what we expected our compound to be. Let's take a look at some examples of how to go from molecular formula to empirical formula. So we saw this first example last lesson when we had glucose. So we said that our empirical formula for glucose would be CH2O. Again, our greatest common factor is six. It will divide evenly into all three atoms here. So we're left with this as our empirical formula. Now, if we look at our second example, we have a 12, a 22, and an 11. Now, there is no number that divides evenly into all three of these subscripts. In that case, the empirical and the molecular formula might end up being the same exact formula. So there is no way to evenly reduce this. Keep in mind, it must divide into all of our subscripts. So yes, you could say that 2 goes into both 12 and 22, but it doesn't go into 11. So it has to divide into all of our subscripts. If we look at our last example, we can divide each of these by 2. So we'll get C2H5O as our empirical formula. Now let's take a look at some examples where we are given percent composition and we have to convert that into an empirical formula. One of the steps that we must do in order to convert from percent composition into empirical formula is to convert between grams of a substance and moles of a substance. Now, we did this back in October. However, I do want to use these two problems to just remind us of how to go from grams of a substance to moles of a substance. So we're going to do this using sodium chloride. So in this case, it says convert 34.23 grams of sodium chloride to moles. So hopefully this setup looks familiar to you. So what we would do in this case is look up the molar mass for both sodium and chlorine on the periodic table. Sodium has a molar mass of 22.99 grams per mole. Chlorine has a molar mass of 35.45 grams per mole. When I combine them, I get a molar mass for sodium chloride that's equal to 58.44 grams per mole. Remember, the unit that we want to get rid of would go on the bottom. So in this case, I would have 58.44 grams of NaCl on the bottom. And on top, I would have one mole of NaCl. 
You would simply calculate this by dividing 34.23 by 58.44 to get our answer of 0 0.5857. Remember, when a unit appears on the top and on the bottom, those will cancel each other out. Let's take a look at a second example. This time we're going to start off with moles, and we're going to convert that into grams. So we have 3.672 moles of calcium chloride. So once again, we need to find our molar mass for calcium chloride. So we have calcium, which is 40.08 grams per mole. We have two chlorines. Each chlorine is 35.45. So two of them would be 70.90 grams per mole. And then when we add these together, we'll get 110.98 grams per mole. In this case, we want to put the 110.98 grams on top so that our one mole of calcium chloride will end up on the bottom and cancel with the moles of calcium chloride here. Calculating this, we have 3.672 this time we're going to multiply because it's on top, 110.98. We wind up with a number of grams equal to 407.5. So again, this is not new. This is something that we learned back in October and we're going to be using again over the course of the next few chapters. So we are now ready to try our first empirical formula problem. Now, to help us organize our work for empirical formula problems, we're going to make use of this short poem that's behind me. So in the poem, it says that our first step will be to convert from percent to mass. Well, in order to do that, we have to work under one assumption. And what our assumption will be is that we have 100 grams of the substance. Since we're dealing with percent, it really doesn't matter what mass of the substance we have. The relative ratio of atoms would be maintained regardless of the sample size. So it's easiest to use 100 grams as our sample size because that allows us to convert our percentages directly into grams. So in our first example, we will have... 27.37 grams of sodium. We will have 1.20 grams of hydrogen. We will have 14.30 grams of carbon. And finally, we will have 57.14 grams of oxygen. Now, we are going to set up essentially four separate equations. So in our first equation, we're going to be converting all of these, as it says here, mass to moles. So all four of these will be converted to moles. One mole of sodium, one mole of hydrogen, one mole of carbon, and finally, one mole of oxygen. The molar masses for each of these elements can be found on the periodic table. So for sodium, that's going to be 22.99 grams of sodium, 1.01 grams of hydrogen, 12.01 grams of carbon, and 16.00 grams of oxygen. So in this next step, we're converting each of our masses into moles. So I'm going to type these into the calculator. So we'll get 27.37 divided by 
we get an answer this time of 1.191 moles of sodium. For hydrogen, I have 1.20 divided by 1.01, .01, so I get 1.19 moles of hydrogen, 14.30 divided by 12.01, .01, and I get 1.19 moles of carbon. And finally, for oxygen, I have 57.14 divided by 16, or 3.571. moles of oxygen. So we have successfully completed step one and now step two. At this point, the instructions tell us to divide by small. So we have four different answers right now. We're going to identify which one is the smallest one, and then we're going to divide each of our answers by that same smallest one. So I'm going to switch up the color here just to keep track. So our smallest number of moles is 1.19, so we're going to divide each of these by 1.19. We get an answer of 1, 1, 1, and then finally 3.571 divided by 1.19 turns out to be 3. So we have now finished step number 3, divide by small. In our case, we ended up with all whole numbers after dividing. This may or may not be the case depending on the individual problem. I will show you examples of both things happening. In this case, though, because we ended up with whole numbers, we don't have to do this last part. Instead, we can write out our formula. We have one sodium, we have one hydrogen, we have one carbon, and we have three oxygens. So this is actually our compound, sodium bicarbonate. Let's take a look at a second example. In this case, we'll be using sodium, sulfur, and oxygen. We'll start off by converting our percent, 32.38% into grams. Again, we're assuming that we have 100 grams of the substance, 22.65 grams of sulfur, and finally, 44.99 grams of oxygen. So we have now completed part one, percent to max. Second part, we're going to convert each of these masses into moles. So one mole of sodium, molar mass off the periodic table is 22.99 grams of sodium. One mole of sulfur, the molar mass off the periodic table is 32.07 grams of sulfur. And finally, one mole of oxygen. Our molar mass off the periodic table is 16.00 grams of oxygen. Typing this into the calculator, we have 32.38 divided by 22.99 we wind up with an answer of 1.408. In the second one, we have 22.65 divided by 32.07. We wind up with an answer of 0 0.7063. And for our last one, we have 44.99 divided by 16.00.
we wind up with a mass or moles rather of 2.812. For moles of oxygen. Notice, just like always, our unit for grams here is dropping out in all three cases, which is why we're left with moles. The next step in our poem tells us to divide by small. So if we look at our three answers, our smallest answer is this one, the 0 0.7063. So we're going to divide all three of our answers by that number. So in this case, we get one this case we get four, and in this case we get two. So our final answer, again, this time we divided by small. We did not need to multiply till whole because we wound up with whole numbers. I'll show you an example where we don't. We have Na2SO4, also known as sodium sulfate. In our third example, we have potassium, chromium, and oxygen. So taking a look first at potassium, we have 26.56 grams of potassium. We have 35.41 grams of chromium, and we have no value for oxygen. So it's important to realize that our values must add up to be 100. So even though we weren't provided a percent for oxygen, we can identify that by subtracting out the known percentages from 100%. So 100 minus 26.56 minus 35.41, and we get a percent, which we're gonna immediately change to grams, of 38.03. Now what we're gonna do is convert, as it says in the instructions, each of these masses into moles. So one mole of potassium is 39.10 grams of potassium. One mole of chromium is 52. 0, 0 grams of chromium, and one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams of oxygen. Notice that my grams will cancel out in each of these, and I'll be left with moles. So let's type these into the calculator. We get 26.56 divided by 39.10, or 0.6793. The second one, we get 35.41 divided by 52, or 0 0.6810 for moles of chromium. And finally, for oxygen, we have 38.03 divided by 16, which is 2.377. Dividing all of these up, we have our smallest one is going to be 0 0.6793. For this last one, where we take 2.377, and we divide it by 0.6793, we wind up with an answer of about 3.50. This is our first example where we need to multiply 
by a number in order to get all whole numbers. So if you wind up with an answer of 3.5, in order to get that to be a whole number, you're going to have to multiply by 2. Now the trick here is that we need to maintain the ratios that we already have. So not only do I have to multiply oxygen by 2, but I have to multiply all of my values by 2. In this case, my final formula is K2Cr2O7. This is the formula for potassium dichromate. In some cases, the problems might try and present the information to you in a slightly different way. We saw that in our last problem when we were not given the percent for oxygen. In our fourth and final example problem, we are again presented with a kind of different way of giving us the information that we need. Instead of giving us percentages for each element in the compound, they simply tell us the mass of the compound and the mass of one of our elements. So in this case, our compound only contains phosphorus and oxygen. The total mass of the compound is 10.150 grams. If the sample contains 4.433 grams of phosphorus, we're going to subtract to find the missing mass of oxygen in our compound. So we will begin with masses instead of percents. However, at this point, everything else is exactly the same moving forward. So we have masses. We're going to convert each of these masses into moles. can cancel out our unit of grams. Calculate our moles. So 4.433 divided by 30.97 turns out to be 1 or 0 0.1431 moles of phosphorus and 5.717 divided by 16 turns out to be 0.3573 moles of oxygen. In this case, our smaller number is the 0.1431. We'll divide them both by that number. So 0.3573 divided by 0.1431 equals 2.496, or when you round it to 2.50. So again, an example where we will multiply by two for each of these. Again, the reason why you do that is to maintain the ratio. So even only, even though only this one has a decimal, we have to multiply them both by whatever number will give us a whole number. So in this case, our final answer is P205. It's also known as diphosphorus. Now, as we wrap up here today, I do want to give you a list 
of the decimals that you should be looking out for if you need to, in fact, multiply to get a whole number. So we have seen already that if we get 0.5 as a decimal, you would multiply by 2. The other decimals that you will come across when you do these problems are 0.667. 0 0.333, 0 0.75, 0 0.25. If you get either of these, you're going to multiply by 3 in order to get a whole number. If you get 0.75 or 0.25, you'll multiply by 4 in order to get a whole number. So, if you get something like 3.5, you would multiply by 2 and get 7. If you get something like 2.25, you would multiply by 4 and you would get 9. So these zeros here are going to be other numbers. I'm just asking you to look at the decimal place here in order to figure out what you would multiply by. If you have questions, please come and visit me either during office hours or set up a meeting on calendar. Thanks very much, everyone. Have a great week.